Hi, this is It's Gonna Be Okay with Dr. Roseanne, and that's me. And this is my Pans and Pandas series. And if you listened yesterday, you heard me shed some tears about Pans and Pandas. And my path to diagnosis wasn't as easy as it should have been, given how much knowledge I have. And that just happens way too often. So let's talk about how pans and pandas and autoimmune encephalopathy, how these clinical conditions that are different are actually diagnosed. Okay. So pans, pandas, and autoimmune encephalopathy are three separate conditions. If you didn't listen to the previous episodes, please do, because it's going to dive into what it is. But all three conditions result from a misdirected immune response where the body attacks itself and produces inflammation. Pans and pandas there is a sudden onset or a deep acceleration of a pre-existing condition, and you have a variety of behaviors, OCD, tics, rage, uh, bedwetting, you name it, shows up, and it shows up suddenly, or again, it's a worsening of something that's already there. Autoimmune encephalopathy can result from the same issues, right? Infection triggers, toxins, like it can in pans, and pandas is strep only, but it's a slower onset. It could be a waxing and waning. So I think that's important to understand, you know, what it is. Um, but let's talk about how these conditions are actually diagnosed. And, you know, it's, there is, first of all, let me just say that there is no single test. Cunningham panel on its own cannot diagnose pans and pandas. Okay. Can we say that again? There is no single test. And it's the same for Lyme disease. And you might get people who say, um, oh, yeah, you can. No, lab work, blood work is there to support treatment. It is not there diagnostically because the diagnostics are not definitive. We cannot be that be the only reason. So let's talk about how it's actually diagnosed um, so that you get a better, better understanding. So first of all, this is how I help people diagnose and treat pans and pandas and, and get people to the right medical provider. So you have to know the clinical criteria and evaluate it. Okay. So let's say that again, you have to actually know what the clinical criteria is and rule it out or rule it out rule it out or rule it in. Okay. Then you have to review the symptoms and the history. Now, what we do is obviously we're able to do brain maps. We'll talk about it. And, um, and then blood work to help rule out other conditions. And then you have to give care. That's what our brain behavior reset program is all about. Um, but when you're talking about pans and pandas, this is some of the things you want to look for, right? So you want to see the common signs and symptoms that we talked about previously. Could it be tick-borne illness um, or some infectious disease or toxin? Look for signs that there it's been there. And it could have been there recently, months, or years ago. Um, and that is often surprising to people. Uh, you want to look for a sudden change in, in the behavior. And sudden changes could be from anxiety to OCD. It could be mild depression to severe depression. Um, and know that infectious diseases and toxins can really exas exacerbate what is already there. And I think that is why a lot of people get missed. Like I went, I worked with somebody years ago who I was the 55th provider that they had gone to. And it was so obvious that it was a sudden onset, but she had a history of depression on and off, but she had gone to like an event where it was outside and there was tall grass and she literally totally de decompensated after that and had gone to all these doctors because she was like, this is not the same. This is not the same. She had depersonalization, which means like, it's almost like you can't see yourself, can't recognize yourself. And I said, I mean, she also had a weird rash, and it, but it wasn't a spiral, you know, rash, a bullseye. So Sure enough, she went and got tested, and that's what it was. That's a pretty common story for me 
where somebody is going to a dozen or more providers. And just know with Lyme disease, on average, a standard case of Lyme, it takes five to seven providers to get a proper diagnosis. That's a standard case. Okay. That's like you had a rash, you had a fever, you had some stuff. That's how hard it is to find somebody who actually understands the criteria and is willing to rule it out, not just say, forget about it. So we have to know and evaluate the, the criteria. These are the four steps that we need to do in order to really diagnose. You got to review those symptoms in the history. What happened? So in the case of that young woman, I went back, there were multiple episodes of depression, but it was like very different and also was just literally she had to leave her life. It was so extreme. And she was in one of the best periods she'd ever had. It didn't fit in the profile and was really shut out. Really, when it happens at that extreme level, which I feel like a lot of times it does. I mean, I um, recently worked with somebody who has autism and the mother kept saying, don't you think this is pans? Don't you think this is pans to the doctors? And they're like, no, he's autistic. And it was like, uh, you can have both. <laughs> and he, he literally had, like, she knew exactly when he went off a cliff, um, and had new symptoms and, and whatnot. And I was like, I don't even know why we're talking about this. He totally does. And she had actually had number three medical blood work to look at what was there. She'd already had that. Like it showed, um, that there were all kinds of clinical markers. We did a QEG brain map. We were able to see the inflammation in his brain. And now I've sent her to a medical provider to really substantiate that. And of course, what has happened? No surprise. He's got multiple tick-borne infections. He actually had a lot of viruses in his system um, and really negatively was affected by COVID. So COVID can be one of these triggers as well. We'll be talking more about this. Um, but you have to look at what's been there. You have to rule things out. Again, I don't believe everybody has pans and pandas, uh, you know, infectious and toxic tr toxin triggers, but most of my people do. Um, and the step four in, you know, this process is really giving care to the people. And I say care because, yeah, people work with us one-on-one -on -one in our program, but they also um, don't... Um, you know, it's just, a, they don't get care elsewhere where people explain things to them. And I think when you're a provider, try to walk a parent through what does treatment look like? What's the expectations? You can't tell anybody. Everyone always says to me like, oh, can you tell me exactly when my child's going to be better? I don't know the answer to that because every brain is unique and also every family is unique. I mean, some of my people, I have to just like, give them a little bit because that's all they can handle. And my other people I had this mom that flew out and she was like, I'm ready, Dr. Rowe, what are we doing? And I'm like, okay. And she had done her homework. She was like, I need this. I want this. Okay. Whatever. And she really had worked on herself. So she was regulated. She was like, listen, I know I had to regulate myself because this kid is tough. So she already had a leg up because if you listen to my pants story and, you know, things that I would tell another pans warrior parent is to calm your nervous system the heck down before you start treating. Um, and I think that's really important. So let's talk about why pans and pandas is misdiagnosed because holy cow, is it misdiagnosed? And usually it's a parent who one of my pans warriors, pandas warriors is really in there. We don't have enough providers who know enough information, um, and we're not talking about this. This really got relegated as something that isn't real. I just don't understand. <laughs> I mean, I see it in a brain. It's so clear in what it is, um, and there's really two distinct profiles, just so you know, in a QEG brain map, which I'm going to be talking about later, and you'll be able to actually see it if you're watching this on YouTube, that emerge, and you then send them to a physician to be verified, right? So you need a medical exam um, to, to have that. But 
sometimes, you know, when you, it's a lot easier to connect the dots looking back. So most of my people, it's a lot of looking back and making sense out of things. Obviously we're looking forward because we really are trying to um, make sense out of what has been, what has worked, what hasn't worked, what are the helpers, what are the herders, so that we can make a treatment plan and a care plan. And, you know, and and I mention a lot and, and I feel grateful that I have these amazing families that come to see me, but I also, also feel very sad that they are, limited in their area where they live. And some of it's in the U.S. and some of it's in other countries. Um, and that there just aren't providers, you know, and I take a very common sense approach and I use a lot of what I've learned, not just with my own pan story, but from my amazing families that have come for me. Um, and, you know, I feel grateful to teach parents to be their own lifeline and I know that I am a lifeline, but really it's about what are the things that actually work? What does the science tell us? We're going to talk more about it. But if you're interested in finding a solution, you can go to drrosanne.com forward slash help. And we have our solution matcher there that can help you decide um, what is the next best step for you, because maybe it's my book, maybe it's a course, maybe it's one-on-one. -on -one. I know everybody wants to work one-on-one -on -one with me, but I take a lot of pans parents on, and that means I can only take a very small amount of people every month. That is it. That's not going to change um, because we need more care. So I hope this was helpful. I think your biggest takeaway is there is no single test. The Cunningham panel is not definitive, and it is a clinical diagnosis that is made with history, exam, and ruling out and ruling in pans and pandas and infectious disease and toxin sources. And um, there often are multiple things at play. Once the infections and toxins get in there, the body breaks down, there's nutrient deficiencies, your nervous system's in overdrive. And these are all things that hurt. And we have to change that. And that's what we do in our brain behavior reset program. So Wherever you are in your journey is exactly where you need to be. And you're getting so much information about pans and pandas. I hope this is helpful for my pans and pandas warriors. Stay strong, mamas and papas and caregivers and grandparents.